So uh, getting right into it, I did want to ask you guys if you had heard a news story today. So a dude took mushrooms. Pretty pretty basic, Kay. right? Who doesn't? Made a tea out of it, which if you've ever taken mushrooms, is a very common way to take psilocybin. You just put it in a little tea and drink it. Right. But this dude made a fatal mistake. He took that, put it into a syringe. Oh, my God. <laughs> shot that shit up into his arm. Damn. Do you hear this? Okay. Nope. Hey, gets better. The mushrooms thrive in dark, warm places. And being a weird little alien body that mushrooms are, they started proliferating in this dude's bloodstream. Okay? So this guy gets to the hospital and he can't talk or do anything. The doctor's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? We've never seen this shit. His liver's failing. His kidneys are shutting down. I mean, he's in complete, like, total organ failure. They look at this dude's blood, and there's a bunch of mushroom spores growing in his fucking bloodstream. Holy shit. Oh, my fucking God, dude. God damn. (laughs) Growing. I mean, what? and if they had left him... You know, to basically keep you know keep growing the mushrooms, it, it would just shut his whole body down, and then it would have eaten his body. And this is something most people don't know. I've talked about this when I was in high school a lot. I always told all my friends, when I die, okay, I have a very specific request. See, mushrooms eat organic material. They're not plants. Most people think that mushrooms are plants. They're not. Mushrooms actually have more in common with human beings than they do plants. See, they breathe oxygen and they put out uh, CO2 and they eat and decompose other fleshy organic material. They don't synthesize, you know, their food from the sunlight. So they actually eat other organic creatures. They breathe oxygen. Like, they're they're a very strange little (laughs) fucking thing. So... If you take mushroom spores and you inject them into a human body and throw that body in a freezer, um, you inoculate the body. And then when you take that body out of the freezer and you let it decompose, those mushrooms will actually take over and colonize your whole body and grow. (laughs) Okay, And the potency of mushrooms has a lot to do with what they eat. Growing it on different types of substrate will give you different types of effects out of the same strain of mushroom. So even if you take the same psilocybin mushroom and you grow it on bird seed or you grow it on something different, you'll actually get different effects out of it. And so I wanted to have all of my friends inject me with mushrooms, and then when I died, pull me out of the freezer. Or or when I died, inject them, pull me out of the freezer, let them grow, and then everybody could eat the mushrooms and commune with me because I'm like, come on, you guys are going to see genius, me. Dude. Dude, that's right? solid. Fucking genius, I, I'm dude. down. I'm going to get eaten by mushrooms and then all my friends are go, this is a mushroom that decomposed Kale's body. So basically my essence, my life force went into growing those mushrooms and all of my friends are going to trip balls. And that's what I want done when I die. So Hell you, yeah. you fucking do it. We'll see you again. And yeah, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> so, I, so I was thinking, I'm like, this motherfucker, he, he's... If you would let him die, I really think it would have colonized his body. And, like, imagine he hadn't gone to the hospital and lived by himself, and you just walked in, and there's just this corpse there taken over by mushrooms like The Last of Us. Like, <laughs> that's exactly what would have happened. A human-shaped mushroom. I was just thinking while you were explaining that, I was like, dude, this is pretty much what happened in The Last of right. Us. Right. <laughs> like, they which all is, overcame which is sports. Which, I mean, if you can't see the thing behind me, scoot the other way. So that's actually what gave me the idea for this, this whole logo. It's my favorite thing. I thought if there is an image that can perfectly capture my imagination and what I want for this, it, it's the, the mushrooms that take over the, the little cordyceps. The, the cordyceps mushrooms. They take over the little ants, right? And the rest of the oh, ants shit. in the colony freak out and they say, get the fuck out of here. And they take the ant and they dump it outside of the colony out in the forest and that ant gets taken over by the mushrooms and it forces it to climb all the way to the top of the canopy which those are like 300 foot tall trees in the rainforest and they they climb all the way to the top and then this fucking mushroom just explodes out of its head and you know starts the whole process over again and there's cordyceps that eat all different types of insects and i'm thinking when's it going to get to people like when are people so prevalent where we're as numerous as insects and cordyceps are going to start taking us over because it, it, there are different types of things that that uh, will actually take over your brain and make you think differently. So this happens with uh, rabies. Mm-hmm. So for some reason, things with rabies hate water. They have an aversion to it. 
Interesting. Or you have like the little, what is it? The They talk about it all the time. Um, the, uh, the disease that's in rat or in uh, cat urine that gets into rats and it makes the rats seek out cats because then the cats eat the rats and oh, that's how it, it hmm. needs the the cat's I think intestines to grow or something like that I'm probably fucking this up but basically it makes the rats seek out cats to be eaten because that's how it procreates so there's a whole bunch of things that can change your thoughts and I have one more example so I was getting into dieting and I thought why is it that um, we crave carbs and things like that or why is it that I can't digest certain foods right so Certain uh, gut bacteria, your gut biome, is super complex, and depending on what you eat depends on what bacteria is alive in your gut. Now, those bacteria can communicate with your brain and tell you to eat things. So if you stop eating carbs, all those little gut bacteria in your body, they're like, bro, we need carbs to live or they're going to die. So you're actually having a little living life form that's not you. It's, a, it's living inside of you, communicating with you. Telling you, hey, we need food. It, it's like, you're just like, mm, you know, I could really get carbs right now, but it's actually living life forms starving to death inside your gut talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> nice. So basically what you're saying is fat people are zombies? I mean, they, <laughs> they could be. They, I mean, maybe they could be slaves to their, the bacteria in their gut. Dude, that's, that's like a whole different rabbit hole because... Right. How big of a commodity fast food is in this country, in the world... In general, everyone knows that there are people that know things that we don't, right? Maybe they've they've known. Maybe maybe they've known that <laughs> whatever they're feeding us in McDonald's, Jack in the Box, all this bullshit that I eat constantly, fucks the brain. It's addictive, dude. It yeah, there's is. there's other reasons for why it's addictive. There's dopamine. There's pleasure responses in your brain. It, there's stuff, but there is a lot of cravings that you get that have to do with your gut biome Fuck yeah. things in your body your body telling you hey we need this and if you stick off of a certain diet and you go to a new diet and you, you stick with it that old bacteria will get replaced by something new depending on what you're eating and you'll slowly stop getting those cravings and you'll start craving the things that you have been eating so <laughs> it, it's like it how much of these it, it let me back up it leads me to think how many ideas do i have or feelings or sensations are actually my own and not just these little things living in my body. And I'm, and I'm like, if that doesn't make you a god, I don't know what does. This because you, you have billions of these little creatures living inside of you that are essentially praying to you, and you can hear them praying for what they need to live, and you can choose to ignore them <laughs> and fucking kill them off. Or it, it, it start over. I mean, it's like a flood. Like, you, you change your diet and go, nope, those motherfuckers are dead. I'm going to this new diet. And you, you create a whole new civilization inside of you. And I'm like, see, I, I don't know if there is a God. Are they even, is he even cognizant that we exist? Or is it kind of like these things inside of us where it's like, can the planet hear us? Praying for what we need to survive and good weather and crops and like, Think because isn't that what it's doing? It's just asking for the food it needs. So yeah. when we were praying for rain and a good harvest, maybe the earth did send in a rain cloud or something like, but it's not even aware that because I'm not aware of the shit that's in my gut. Maybe the earth's mm. not aware of us. Maybe God doesn't even know we exist. We're just this little thing in the back of his mind that he thinks is his own thoughts. So I, I don't know. It, it sent yeah. me down a weird rabbit hole. No, you're on the song. I, I really think that if a God does exist, it's not in the way we think he exists. See, I think you're on to something. Because think about it. We're not praying for good weather anymore. Yeah. We get shed weather. Yeah. Like, we're not praying that we get Climate more change. water. God damn it. Yeah. We got to get the collective <laughs> hive mind to start praying again. Are you saying that we have to pray climate change away? Yeah. Just like we pray the gay away. It's the yeah. same thing. 